we have actually covered a lot for how to generate different materials, how to work with lights, how to set up our digital uh, studio environment. We haven't really looked into actually how to uh, create now an image because you do not want to make a sc screenshot. You want to render an actual image. So let's take a look into what we can do for that. So here I go into uh, solid view and let's click on this camera icon. Let's close this for a moment and let's pay attention to dimensions first. Let's zoom out a little bit. And here basically you see uh, the, the resolution X and Y. So basically this image is 1920 pixels wide and this is Y, so 1080 pixels tall. And the image would be rendered, for example, now at 100% or 50%, so 50% of those values. Now, if you would produce something for video or TV, you have different settings here. Uh, but let's say now you want to, to print something. So to print something, you need to know the correct pixel size. So let me go for a moment into my image editor of choice, Pixelmator. Let's create a new document. And let's say I would like to render something uh, eight and a half by 11 inches. So a typical page, 150 DPI. This is basically your minimum, what you need. Let's click OK. And then let's see how many pixels is this. So I see if I would like to render an image that is printing well on a page, letter format, I need at least 1,650 pixels by 1,275. So back in Blender, let's say it should be landscape. So 1,065 by 2,000, uh, 1,275. And you notice actually that this camera, uh, camera change the proportion based on the amount of pixels. So it also represents you pretty much the end format of your image. So that is now for how to set up your correct image and the size. Maybe, maybe let's move the camera in a little bit more. If you go to output, you could maybe select JPEG uh, here. Maybe we select the desktop. Basically, I tell Blender all the time when I and render and save always to jump right to my desktop and provide me with JPEG as the image format of choice. And then we have something called sampling. And now this might look a little bit confusing. Let me show what happens if we have preview set to five. You see up here samples five. Maybe I set this one to one. So this is one, you see it's very grainy. If I go to two, it goes one sample more. So the more samples, as you can see, the image gets cleaner. And the idea behind this render engine is instead of rendering step-by-step step each small section of the image clean, it gives you a very coarse overview and then step-by-step step it is actually cleaning up. So for example, if I type in 100, God, it seems not, not too bad. Maybe for this image I need 150. Yeah, let's, let's leave it at that. So I'm sure then for my final image rendering, so this is 
the amount of samples that's being used for uh, rendering then it into an image, I need to have the same. Okay. Then let's see. Wow, well, this we can skip for the moment. We can skip. And titles, maybe. Currently, when we work with the CPU, you can also keep at 64. So this is all fine. Okay, great. So here I go into solid mode. And then you could either go render, render image, or in here, just click render. And for demonstration purpose, I scale this one down to 25% so it renders faster. And then once you hit render, you see the software switches to the image editor and then creates those tiles for your image. If I set this one, for example, to 50 and click render, you see now that's taking a little bit longer. And if I zoom in, I can see uh, there's a little bit of graininess still left. So um, maybe, maybe actually I might need like 200, 250. So let's see. So you see with the higher amount of samples, uh, the look or the feeling of the image looks better, but it also takes a little bit longer to render because the higher the samples, the more the software has to calculate. Also, one thing to consider, because we're, we're probably also doing a lot of renderings just for print, um, every printer, laser or inkjet, has a certain noise to the way how it prints. So that means uh, small details, like your small graininess, you might see in an image, on the web, but you might not necessarily see it actually when you print it out. So if, if you do something for print, you might not really have to make it perfect. Because that amount of extra time you put in, you might not necessarily see then when you print it. So let's wait uh, till the software is done rendering. And this is an an old 2008 computer. So you see this whole image just took a meager one minute to render. So that wasn't really that bad. The image still looks a little bit flat. The highlights are not correct, uh, but that's something we can tweak later. So how do you now save the image? Inside the image viewer or editor, you could go to image, and then say save image. And you see, I am actually now at the desktop in my iron folder, uh, save as image JPEG is selected. If I click here, I can still select a different format. I can call this maybe rendering test, click save image. And then when I go to my folder, save, there's my image, saved. So yeah, that's basically it, how you can then render an image and then save it into a file.